Well, the Hacienda La Union has been in our family for approximately 80 years, and my grandfather arrived in this area, and did what had to be done at that time, which was to open the forest to generate pastures for cattle and for planting potatoes, which is what he usually does in this area. We are located in the area of influence of the Los Nevados National Natural Park. We are located at 3,800 meters above sea level, and as we all know the Paramo is an ecosystem that is very important, because that is where the water cycle is regulated, that is where the water is born and that is where we get the water for the cities and for more than 70% of the people who live there. For the cities and for more than 70% of the urban population in our country, so it is of vital importance that we protect them and do this type of things that we do here, we also made the decision five years ago to make a radical change in the use of the soil and this was due to a moment when we were there and we realized that we had to change the use of the soil. We were there and we realized that in the house where we always went with my grandfather where we always were there was no water, but there is no water because the city disconnected a hose, or because it no longer works but because the spring had dried up and this obviously corresponded to the misuse or exaggerated use of the land in terms of livestock, in terms of potato monocultures, in addition to that having happened this episode, we had the opportunity to a documentary called Chaospiracy so it is a documentary that talks a lot about these issues that talks a lot about deforestation in the world and what are its main causes and man did it not make us become aware it made us think again or at least think that we can still do something for the planet and that the planet does not need a warm water handkerchief that emits drastic changes radical changes and that we can all do something to help Because we all help and we have been helping in its deterioration so we can help to change this. We can help to change this situation and we did it and we are doing it we are risking everything we are putting a lot of our part. But also calling on all people. So that we are not left alone in this attempt and knowing that we all can do it much better and much faster. My grandfather unfortunately is no longer here and I guess because some cousins made the comment that he should be rolling in the dirt for a while and that he is not here anymore. He should be rolling over in his grave a little bit. Because for them and for many of the family it means or so they say. Marido to return the other farm is a bush that is to say he is going to leave it to finish is what is obvious although I am not so young as to say that the generation that is starting but we are in the middle. To say that the generation that is starting but we are in the middle, I am in the middle so I have to go with my parents, my father is already a 70 year old man and contrary to what I would have believed, he was the most receptive of the old people, I agree. I agree that there is already a lot of support for the land, after all the benefits that have been given to many people. I agree that the land has been supported after many generations have benefited from it. It seems fair to me what is proposed, let's give it a break. Now it is their responsibility that this is not a donation because they do not want it, it is a purely altruistic act, in other words you should look for an alternative that will allow those who come after them to continue taking care of the land, yes, but also at the same time, to have a livelihood for themselves. And I thought it was a very good approach and I decided to accept it and I said yes, we are going with the understanding that it is the whole family that has been participating, both the youngest and the oldest. I thought it was a very good approach and I decided to accept it and I said that if we are going to participate, both the youngest and the oldest ones, we are going to be as in the story and contributing and that is how we generate the Zero Footprint Foundation as such with the only social purpose of supporting the environment and protecting the environment and what better example for the environment than the one that we are going to have.
The environment and what better example for the other people also because there we have neighbors we are not right so let's say to give the access for the people that we can we can. I don't think I was not involved in the issue of managing potato crops but what is it that we can do at this time that are being so profitable for the environment. Can at this moment are being as profitable as those agricultural and livestock activities in the ecosystem for very well and in all the others but there let's say that we can evidence a little more the consequences of these two practices. The consequences of these two practices of extensive cattle ranching can be more evident. That implies those spaces too wide for a single animal that is more or less of the order of one hectare, and the potato monoculture of potato is the continuous and progressive sowing in the same lots of the same crop it is obvious that the potato requires a lot of agrochemicals of many insecticides of many chemical elements, that do nothing other than contaminate the water the basis of everything I have there is the water for me and for all of us who are in the area. Water for me and for all of us who are in the project that is the only thing we think about is water, how to take care of it, how to protect it and behind that vital element there are all the others, the plants of the forest, the birds, the felines, the mammals that live there and with the cattle ranching the problem is the continuous flow of the animals, the exaggerated weight of these living beings, because they are the ones that live in the forest and they are the ones that live there exaggerated weight of these living beings that what they do is crushing the soil and compressing it more and more than in some parts when they transit a lot in one place they generate the lacerations certain the gullies and this and the continuous passage through all the pastures and this compresses the soil and makes it lose a little if not all the property of absorbing that fog that we had the opportunity to live here to be in it in constant flow. With it that fog is not trapped and it is not possible to regulate what the ecosystem does. So regulating the water cycle is to trap that fog to trap the constant rains and retain them so that the riverbeds of the rivers and streams are maintained at the same level in dry seasons as in winter seasons and not as it happens now that when it rains then an avalanche comes down and when it does not rain then we have no water in the streams. Let's go. Five years ago we decided to be in the Huela Cerro Foundation and we have two initiatives one is called River Factory that has taken the biggest boom and we have even adopted that name for this beautiful site for glamping that we have here now and another initiative called Building for Change which is more focused on bringing tourists and people to fall in love with the Parmo but with a very specific activity, which is bird watching. So let's say that we have two lines of action. My brother likes bird watching more than I do, and I have always cared about it. I have been very concerned and I have wanted to focus a lot on the water issue and the water issue requires that the pastures disappear, that we can collaborate in this restoration in an active way by planting new seedlings or seedlings that are from the area that sound from this Paramo ecosystem. That are autochthonous, but helping to the restoration of the ecosystem. The ecosystem also understanding that this is an area of 200 hectares so we have that it has been a titanic process that is why we call on people to help us to adopt the trees to come and plant them with us here so that they have the experience of knowing the ecosystem so that they fall in love with this. This is always open 24 hours a day and every day of the week for them to come and visit us. In fact the Glamping River Factory was not initially to host the public but to host the people that were going to help us, the volunteers that we were going to have here, the academics, the researchers, all those people but the process has taken us through its own process and we have been able to get to know the ecosystem. 
and we are going towards the big one, but also the project itself has marked some routes for us and it was like that. And that's how as a glamping river factory it has become an important source of resources for the Huela Cerro Foundation. And for the maintenance of the land without having to do any other economic activity, as different as agriculture and livestock farming creates what we have been doing since we started the project, taking the radical decision to remove 150 animals that we had here of cattle. And well, we have already established a little more than 30 hectares of potato crops that we had at that time to give way to the restoration. And what we have been living so beautifully that we confirmed it with the pandemic. That at first I thought it was a little more like the desire and enthusiasm of the project and it was that we started to see. The flow of animals much more constant. Then we only found an anteater and I found a taper and I saw more birds. But I thought it was my desire that when the whole pandemic it was demonstrated that when everybody stayed still the animals began to go out to the cities and when they arrived to the houses that were more bordering than the natural environments. So this has happened as we are also in a very privileged geological position that is looking towards the snow-capped mountains we have the view of minerals but we are also making or shaping finished as an important biological corridor that is the important biological corridor which is the northern part of the Rio Blanco de Manizales reserve that borders with us here in the north and we are also joining Rio Blanco with Torre 4 which is the nature reserve also of Corpacaldas which in turn crosses the road and joins with Bosquez de Lecheque which is also an important nature reserve. So this has also become vitally important because now the animals can travel in this. Animals can now pass through this biological corridor without being as worried as before because it is no secret that in the countryside there has always been a struggle and conflict with the animals that eat the chickens and those that eat the cows and those that steal the eggs. So this friction here in this area has diminished a little. We have to be aware that the planet does need us to change some of our attitudes. Some attitudes, we as human beings, need to stop being so predatory. Predators and stop being so excessive in the things that we have and that we want. then it is possible to lower the race to lower the race. To lower the subject and not to be such consumers of some things that do not do so much on the planet and that some generation definitely has to make a line of people that whatever sacrifice you make, whatever effort you make, someone will have to sacrifice. I want to start and we can set an example and I believe that up to now we have done well because the Mint has not complained about the economic issue, but I believe that they would have called or come no we are doing well I believe that it is possible what is possible but linking everyone together and and definitely understanding that a certain sacrifice has to be made and that and that did not give money from the first day we had to make an obvious economic effort and we continue to do so because for the opportunity cost stop planting potatoes and having cattle if it is a little high because it is of vital importance and in the more we stand despite the fact that there are only a few countries and that colombia is one of the lucky ones that has the vast majority of these ecosystems because what we are concerned is responsible for regulating the water cycle that enters the soil slash contact with the soil most of these ecosystems because what we respect is the one in charge of regulating the water cycle that enters the soil slash contact with the soil. If any of it leaks any of it goes down by runoff to the riverbeds and circulates to the sea it evaporates and starts again. But that is to say that this cycle is left in a logical and slow way and has its times what I explained to you then when there is not this ecosystem when everything becomes prairie or when for the game when worse the soils are the soils are eroded there stops existing the intentional ecosystem as such the part.
that goes between touching the soil or that the plants absorb. The mist and it infiltrates and reaches the rivers is accelerated this already becomes a much more drastic way much faster. And then what I was saying when it rains you can notice from one in the riverbed of the river to the next. In the riverbed as its level rises, and when water is scarce due to lack of rain, people can also notice how the level of the river decreases or how the sources of irrigation water dry up. We live it in fact that is why I have told you one of the reasons why we started the project is that that is where the water sources are born that is why we also called the project and the Guide the River Factory Initiative, because what we have there is evidently a new factory of new watercourses. With what we are doing we have counted 22 new water sources that surely were there before we started. We have seen that these springs are very scarce, but here it is not a very wide river, nor is it very abundant. Here sometimes the trickle of water is just beginning to roll, just beginning to sound, it is here where it has to be born, it is upwards, there is no more land, there is no more where it has to happen, if that were to happen, half of the mountain would become an inhospitable land, a land of rocks and pasture, practically lifeless. Within the initiative of the River Factory we invite people to make a donation which in this case is 50 hours to plant a plant of that ecosystem that has the characteristics because we have relied on the entities in Corpacaldas mainly in agreements with other foundations that support us in the part of knowledge in the transmission of knowledge and these species that we have. They have called them in the literature as pioneer species. These species that we have are called pioneer species and what they do is that they have a little faster development within the slower than the Paramo ecosystem because the Paramo ecosystem in the past was known as dwarf forests because the growth is much slower than in a tropical forest ecosystem because here it grows 10 times less but it also grows much more slowly than in a tropical forest ecosystem. Here it grows 10 times less but also the density of the wood that finally is summarized in. Carbon capture, the carbon capture is 10 times more than that of the tropical rainforest. Then what we see with the people is that we have more than 6 species among them a paramo pine that is not a pine. But they call it that and it is also called guard do we have other species that fulfill the function they are very good competing with the pastures and they are very good competing with where there is no vegetation. They are very good at competing with the grasses and are very good at competing with where there is no vegetation, for them they grow a little faster and open the way for other species that are growing spontaneously and with the passage of the birds every time there are more visits from other animals, rodents, and birds above all that are the ones that help us to restore the ecosystem and begin to give way to these new seedlings. For them they are growing a little faster and they open the way to the other. As you can see and have the experience here, in that place in general in the whole mountain the winds are usually constant and sometimes very strong. Definitely the geodesic shape is the structure that best supports the wind forces, because regardless of the side on which the attacks occur it is the one that offers the least resistance because of its circular shape and that is true and that we had thought from the beginning in these structures and it has given us very good results because as you can see the winds are strong but when you are inside you feel safe you feel calm that it will not continue flying from there let's say 
Look at the house as my grandfather built it and where it is built is because it is square and because it is rectangular. So I had to build it behind a small ravine so that it would not be blown away and this did not happen because we are already located right on the reef. We are not challenging the states we know how to take it we are located in a privileged position in this geographical position we are in front of all the snow-capped mountains when it clears in the mornings and sometimes in the late afternoon we can see all of you that privilege and also from the same place. We can see the city of Manisales in all its splendor and especially at night it looks so beautiful illuminated and the people are always yellowed first because being tropical we being people from here because the truth is that we are visited mostly by people from here in Colombia. Almost none of us have the experience of the absolute cold of being in sub-zero temperatures and that we can do it we can live it at night we can have a wind chill below zero we can have a thermal sensation below three degrees from minus three to minus six degrees and the truth is that we are not used to this topic when you read someone that it is cold and always a jacket so I have already learned a little bit so I tell him to make accounts for the North Pole because it is going to be cold and the people if they start to prepare a little bit for the North Pole because it is going to be cold. People start to prepare themselves a little better and that makes you have a much more pleasant experience when you are not well prepared for these climatic conditions. Anyway inside the domes as such the temperature is very bearable. And when you stop telling people. As you can see me inside the domes we have very well conditioned tents where people sleep camping type. They don't have to set up anything. Everything is conditioned, there you find everything you need for sleeping. Bags, the pillows, we are going to be super comfortable there and then inside the layers you also have an additional temperature. And when you start to get warm you are already super like at home and the other thing is that the feeling that most people say is to feel in the sky. To be walking among the clouds. To be above the clouds and those sensations are wonderful. One does not have a word. It is almost to say what it feels like when those things happen there in the factory rivers and the Wonderful sunsets then it is good sometimes I feel like I am so impartial speaking because I remain in love with the project and what it means not only for us but also for the whole planet to be able to give this example and make it a reality. When we started the project, one of the things that projects of this type are reviewed is the capacity that they are not scalable, that they can be replicated in other parts, but above all that they can grow. We believe it and we have understood it as I was saying. We are neighbors of the natural reserve of the White River. We are also neighbors of Corpacaldas with its Tower 4 reserve. But we also have neighbors who are engaged in traditional and normal activities and commonly used which are livestock and potatoes. I would invite people that from my experience it is possible to have activities to protect and care for the ecosystem. and with margins and profits that are if not superior to those of other activities. There are entities that support us and that we can rely on for the technical part. We are included there not only because we protect the ecosystem and we are in a process of restoration.
but also because our intrinsic processes that we advance for ecotourism to invite our visitors to enjoy this ecosystem. Because there we also promote all recycling practices, solid waste disposal practices, practices for travelers, to take their garbage with them, along with their suitcases. So all this has helped us to be viable as a business, as a project, as a foundation and I think it would serve as an example to all the people who want to implement it. And we welcome you not only to visit us to enjoy this wonderful experience, but also so that we can share some experiences as businessmen and entrepreneurs and as visionaries of ecotourism in this area that like you, we can share with you.